Is this thing on? Welcome back to Big Mouth and fancy seeing you here in June. A very welcome, my friends, and especially my enemies. Come in, sit down, no touching. I don't do the touching. And welcome to Thursday's edition of the DCEU Daily. And if you're feeling charitable, please smash the subscribe button. Please smash the like button. And please follow me on Twitter at Movies TV Mad. So we're talking about Johnny Depp again. Because yesterday I was talking about Johnny Depp being linked to the role of, um, of Joker in Matt Reeves' The Batman after Kevin Smith said that he'd like him to play him. He'd like um, Johnny Depp to play him. Now, interesting, but it's not really, it's, there's no fire there and there's hardly any smoke. So I've read another rumour now, and, and, and the latest rumour is that Johnny Depp could be playing Eubard Fawn, a.k.a. Reverse Flash, in the Flash movie starring, starring Ezra Miller. Wow, wow, wow. So this is really interesting now. Who would you rather he played? The Joker in Matt Reeves' The Batman or Reverse Flash? Johnny Depp needs this. Johnny Depp needs this badly. Now, I actually love him in um, the Fantastic Beast sequel. I thought he was brilliant. He's still a really good actor. But obviously, you can tell he's been affected by what's been happening with his marital problems and his personal life. He needs that role to say, yes, I am a great actor. In every Pirates of the Caribbean film, he proved what a great actor he is. A character actor, full of personality. In fact, if Johnny Depp was English, he could play the Doctor, aka Doctor Who, because he's got that, hasn't he? He's got that craziness. So, I don't know. Um, who would I like him to play? I'd like him to play both, but isn't this interesting and ironic that Johnny Depp could play the character that helps change the timeline in the DCEU, which means maybe could delete Amber Heard's mirror from the DCEU. Think about that, my friends. Think about how clever Hamada is. He can literally take this plot device from Wonder Woman 1984 and the Flash Flashpoint movie cast Johnny Depp himself to delete Amber Heard's mirror from the DCEU. I mean, that's cruel justice, isn't it? And I'm not saying, I shouldn't even say the word justice because I don't know who's right and who's wrong. And I've spoken about it before. I think they were they were both being nasty, let's say nasty to each other. And I, that's why I won't take any sides because I think they're both as bad as each other. And it's none of our business because it's their private life. And if they're both loco and they're both, you know, not, you know, treating each other with respect, then they both, it was good that they separated, right? And so, and, and what do we care? Why are we taking sides anyway? It's ridiculous, right? What's the point? I would absolutely like to see Johnny Depp in any role within the DCEU. He's already part of Warner Brothers. He's, as I say, he's, involved with Fantastic Beasts, and unlike a lot of critics and a lot of um, naysayers, I think he did really well in, in the role of the character of the villain in, in those films. So um, I would absolutely love it. Um, I think even though the Joker would be really, really good, I think he'd be a great Joker, I think the more realistic rumour is the one that he's playing the reverse Flash. That would be amazing. And I think he could do evil so, so well. So I'd like to see that. Again, um, these are just rumours at, at this point. And what you've got to understand is, it's very interesting if even, if, if while this virus is going ahead, if anyone in Hollywood is actually thinking about stuff, still writing stuff, developing stuff, I would imagine someone who's writing a movie is still at home and can write a movie. Anyone who's thinking about big name castings can sit there and decide who they're going to cast for what role. So those things are not going to stop. They can't produce anything right now. They can't go into the studio. They can't go on location, but they can be planning for these movies. So at this moment in time, Johnny Depp even being involved within the DCEU is a massive, massive rumour. But I tell you what, it would be amazing. It really would. And excites me a hell of a lot. And I do think 
He would be a great Eubard Fon. So bring it on. Let's do it. And let's see what happens there. Now, continuing on the discussion I had yesterday here on the DCEU Daily, I spoke about Amy Adams saying she'd love to play Lois again, but she feels the studio is going in a different direction. And what I want to do here is try and think about this. What kind of direction are they going in? Well, for her to say that, they're recasting the role. That's obvious. But again, we all know this. There's no point living in denial. The timeline will be changed in Wonder Woman 84 and the Flash Flashpoint movie. It's going to happen. Now, whether it happens in both movies or the Wonder Woman 1984 um, canon change, timeline change, is just a rumour and it's not going to happen. Whether it happens in both films or just the Flashpoint movie, it's going to happen, right? The timeline's going to change. Whether we have to wait till 2022 or this summer, all being well with this virus, of course, we'll have to wait and see. But one way or another, this timeline is being changed, right? They're going to change things so they can recast, so they can restructure the DCEU. That's the plan, right? And as I said yesterday, I love Amy Adams. I've loved her since I've seen her in Smallville. I think she's a really great artist. I, I think she's wonderful. She's got a beautiful heart. But at the end of the day, I think it would be the right time to recast Lois Lane, mainly because I feel she's not getting any younger. And one of the problems, of course, with the Justice League movie, it didn't really leave her in a good place. Now, obviously, that's going to anger a lot of people. Now, don't forget these rumours of reshoots for the Snyder Cut of Justice League are still rumoured to be happening. But again, nothing's going to be happening right now because of this virus. Again, it's ruining everything. It's putting all we know and love in the world at a standstill, right? So all there can be right now, as I said earlier, is plans. So potentially Henry Cavill and Amy Adams could be back one last time to play these characters in the Snyder Cup. That for me would be a really good fond farewell. So if they're going a different direction, they could even be recasting Superman. But that's been a discussion between us, hasn't it? What, since 2017, 2018? These rumours have been coming for a long time. Now, we know that Ben Affleck is not involved in the Batman, but we'll see about that. But Henry is, has even come out in the past six months and said, things will happen. Be patient. I'm still Superman. So he seems quite confident. So again, that's very interesting and intriguing. So we really don't know where we're heading with all of this. Um, so, you know, rumours of Johnny Depp. You know, Amy Adams saying, you know, the developments for Superman, uh, they're going in a different direction, which means then they're, they're no longer not developing Superman. If, if you're going in a different direction, you're still developing Superman, right? You're still going to have to have a Lois Lane. So at least that's happening. At least ah, something's happening with that. So that is very, very, very exciting. We all self-isolate whether we're ill or not. This coronavirus situation, as I said earlier, is changing how we live our lives. Um, how will we eat? Will there be electric? Will the internet still be running for me to upload these videos? You know, we'll all be sitting in the dark. Is this the end of the way we know the living world? Well, I don't. I think that will depend where you're living right now, because um, if you're in China or if you're in India or if you're part of the EU. I think that you're probably going to be OK, but I don't know about America and I don't know about the UK. I mean, America seems to be handling this a lot better, but the, it, the, it's still a massive, massive problem. And the way America's run is problematic anyway, because you've got your president and, you know, then you've got your senators and you know, you've got your sheriffs. It's ridiculous. The whole thing's ridiculous, right? Too many, you know, too many pigs, not enough troughs, right? That, 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 that's the problem. So America and the UK are very problematic as well because they're being, because of who their prime minister and presidents are. I do think it's ironic that America will be sending a thousand pounds, a thousand dollars each month to each of their residents. Let's see how long that lasts and how that's going to work. So the whole, well, a lot of the world is in shutdown. Now this, this all started in China. Let's not forget that China dealt with this. It's done. It's over. They are now living their lives. They're like getting 20 cases a day now, which is nothing, 
right? And um, most of those are just at home, um, just getting over it, right? So then we have to ask the question, do we absolutely believe what we're being told about this coronavirus? And I think we're going to do these segments on the DCEU Daily Every Day because I think it's important. And as we go on and on with this seclusion and this um, being at home all day and things not actually developing in the entertainment industry, there's going to be less and less to talk about. So I always talk about DC and the DCEU. That's my, my number one priority. But this is happening in the world and we need to talk about it. And we need to kind of comfort each other and reach out to each other. And I think that's important. Um, so do I believe, I've, uh, do I, have I ever believed in the danger of this, this so-called um, virus? No. I think it's a cover story. I think this is a typical black ops cover story. And I don't believe it one little bit. And actually, this is the worst cover story. Um, story that a black ops has ever come up with as far as i'm concerned and i don't know who come up with it but it's so unconvincing so you have a virus which is very similar to influenza but it's supposed to be a more aggressive virus to people with underlying issues right the elderly you know poor lungs you know weak kidneys overweight people things like that so they're the ones at risk the rest of us will either get it um have a bit of a cold and a headache and a cough for a few days get over it or we won't even know it's inside us at all. But we're all carriers, right? So what happens is we can spread it, allegedly, to the weak and underlining people, right? So apparently more and more of those people are ill. So why are we having shutdowns? Well, you know, the official story is, is because our health systems around the world can't handle the influx of what this virus is doing. But I wonder... If the media around the world didn't frighten the crap out of everyone, maybe the people who were healthy and just got it and really didn't really were scared of it would have just blown their nose a few times and they would have got on with their lives. Right. Now, I'm not saying the media shouldn't be informing people about being careful and saying this is, a, a, you know, a huge, a, a huge kind of um, virus that can go from one person to the other a lot quicker than influenza. And people with underlying issues are in danger. So why isn't it from the start that the, why wasn't they encouraging people with underlying issues to stay at home? To stay at home, whether you're ill or healthy. If you've got underlying issues, we will help you financially stay at home. Right. So the rest of us. Right. And basically, if you live with someone with underlying issues, we will cover the cost of looking after them and you'll have to go into a hotel which will pay for think about it everyone that's actually cheaper and actually works oh no once they knew it was in china they still let people from china travel all over to every sodding country which was spreading it instead of closing their borders to china for two or three months again too much common sense right no they didn't stop that they didn't stop that so now Everyone's getting it and passing it on with, to people with underlying issues. So everyone is scared. A lot of the world is on lockdown. And it seems like, you know, we can bring DC back into this conversation, actually. As a kid watching Superman the movie, me and my dad always used to discuss how the fate of Krypton would ultimately bef befall the human race and Earth. But this is a very different way for humanity to go, isn't it? It's not the sudden explosion and everyone just gone. This is this is slow, isn't it? This is slow and terrifying and stage by stage. And it's not really the virus that frightens me the most. It's human nature. It's you and me. It's people and the way they act. The binge shopping, right? The it's become a joke now and a meme, but the influx of buying loads and loads of toilet paper, right? When you could just get your shower, and you know, I don't have to describe it to you, right? But there's up more than one way of cleaning your backside. But anyway, people panic. It's human nature. People are arguing about what, you know, oh, I picked that up. Oh, no, that's mine. This is how it's going to stop. In the UK, Boris Johnson has already got 24,000 troops ready to help the police. But what, why? What help do they need? Wouldn't it be better to put more investment? Take the investment out of them, right? Don't invest in more of soldiers, right? Actually put it in the NHS and hospital care. Make every private health medical facility public. 
so it can help with the struggle, right? The UK are shutting down schools on Friday, a week later after everybody else's. They've been helping spreading that virus in that country a lot more. I have family over there, right? This is what's happened. But can we believe all of this? Could there be another reason why they don't want us to leave our houses? Stay the F home, the celebrities are staying on the internet. Another big problem, of course, is the normies who swallow everything their governments and media tell them. I, my first piece of advice in this situation is to think for yourself. And if it smells wrong and if it, 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 it lands wrong in your head, then probably is wrong. A virus that 80% can get and survive from. And from that, we are got getting lockdowns all around the world. I don't know about you, but that doesn't make much sense to me. Do they really care about people with underlining issues in the elderly that much that they do this? And I've already presented a better solution for that, right? Take the people with underlining issues under the equation by locking them down or putting them somewhere nice where they can live and be comfortable and watch the telly. Instead of locking down everything, take them out of the equation. But no, instead we've got Boris Johnson who's going to launch the army. Why? Because he's not just going to have a lockdown. He's going to have a state of martial law very, very soon. He's going to do what China did. Now, it's fine for China because everyone's used to that way of life. But the UK, people are used to doing what the hell they want. So if you go into the shops and someone takes your parking space, you might have a bit of a shouting. Well, here comes Mr. Soldier, state of martial law. Boom. You won't be able to breathe the wrong way. And people in the UK, because I was brought up in the UK, are simply not used to this. This is a very aggressive way of managing this situation. And let's be honest here, um, it hasn't been managed in the UK at all well because it's managed by people who doesn't want to invest in their people, doesn't want to give their taxes back to them. They pocket your taxes and they don't want to give them back to you. The whole idea of you paying taxes and national insurance so you have hospitals, so you have a police force, so you don't have to worry when you go to bed at night. But no, while the president, the prime minister of France or whatever they call him, is um, voiding utility bills and giving people money to survive, Boris Johnson has said, well, it's all right, everyone. Businesses, you can borrow money on lower interest rates. You're so kind, Boris. You see the difference? You see the difference between socialism, capitalism and communism, right? So Boris Johnson literally, and his government believe this is a war. They believe they are the war government. He believes he's the war prime minister. Don't, skip, don't get scared now, kids. So how can we live without being afraid with this situation? So I'm living in Cyprus. There's about 60 people with this virus in Cyprus. 25% of them are already leaving hospitals to recuperate at home. Um, there is a lockdown here. It's a semi-lockdown. Schools, I think, are shut for the next month. But you can still go shopping. Um, it's not, I mean, we may be behind the UK and America and Italy. We may still have that. We'll, we'll see. If it's true, and they're not just trying to keep us in our homes for another reason, what would that reason be? I don't know. It, there could be any reason. For all we know, the aliens are going to invade. Maybe they're coming from underground. Sounds nuts, doesn't it? Sounds nuts. But what sounds more nuts to you? An alien invasion or everyone and everything being locked down, a whole world, films being cancelled, everything being locked away for the first time in our history, right, since, since the Second World War, right, over a virus that can't kill 80% of the population or something a little bit more nefarious that they're not telling us about. So... This probably kind of depresses you, this conversation. So I'm going to finish off, like they do in the media, let's have a little bit something happy. And I'm not going to be happy, but I'm going to give you advice. The best thing to, to live like this, because it's different for us. We're used to being free, right? And growing up, I used to see nations on the news not being free, you know, starving and famine. That could be coming to us here in the West. Who knows? All you can do is take each day as it comes. 
If you've got food in your fridge and in your plate and in your oven today, and you've got enough cigarettes for today, be happy with that. And you can still watch TV and your lights aren't turned off today. Be happy with that. But we are heading for an uncertain future. But the good news is, as long as I've got um, electricity and an internet connection and a YouTube channel, I'll be here delivering the DCEU Daily Daily. And at the end of the video, is just talking about this current situation and how I feel about it. Please like, share and subscribe. Please comment down below and I'll be back tomorrow with even more DCEU Daily. And please do comment down below about this Johnny Depp situation. Who is he going to play? If anyone.